Now that I've played Honkai Star Rail for who knows how many hours over about 150 days, I'm finally reaching the point where there are a whole bunch of things I wish I had been doing from the start. Like any gacha game, Star Rail showers you with resources at the very beginning. But over time, some of those become rarer and rarer, and a whole lot of them are time-gated behind dailies and weeklies. Take, for example, credits. If you're just starting out, and all of your characters are pretty low level, you're probably swimming in the darn things. It seems like just yesterday that I had nearly 4 million credits, and now, I'm completely broke. Do you understand the lengths that some players go to grind for these? Since they're pretty limited and farming them via Calyx is very inefficient, players have taken to farming them via overworld mobs. Thanks to Acheron and her ability to defeat enemies instantly without combat, these have become just a little bit more easy to stomach if you have her at only 45 minutes or so. But if you don't, this takes somewhere around one and a half to two hours. And what do you get from that? About 115,000 XP for four characters, not bad. But the real reason people farm this is for the meager 70,000 credits. People are spending an hour or two farming a number of credits that isn't even enough to upgrade one endgame trace. All of those mobs only give one to 200 credits each. It's a long grind. I was 100% one of those people that couldn't even understand how people run out of credits. But look at this. These traces take 160,000 credits each. Even just one full team of them will set you back a ton. So I have some tips, things that I regret not doing sooner, things you should be doing every day, or at least checking on every day, and do as much as possible. So my number one recommendation is to do your dailies. If not for the 60 stellar jades, do it for the credits. There were plenty of days where I skipped these because I wasn't feeling any kind of way about pulling for one of the new 5 star characters anytime soon. But in reality, it's the credits I need. Just doing your interastral peace dailies will net you 53,000 credits, which when you think about it is worth roughly one and a half to two hours worth of effort. So really don't miss out. Those dailies are super easy to complete. That is a ton of credits every week that you don't have to actively grind for. And while you're at it, send out those assignments. Even if you don't need any of the leveling materials, credits, or XP books, send them out for something every day and make sure to include two characters for the bonus. It isn't much, but it adds up over a long period of time, especially when you're starting and you're playing pretty casually. I've never once farmed for things like Glimmering Cores. All of them come from assignments. At least, yeah, I haven't farmed for them. Because I've always sent out my assignments since day one. So just send them out. Get stuff. Maybe don't worry about the food materials. But if you need XP books, if you need uh, Light Cone books, if you need leveling materials, do it. You probably already know you should be doing your simulated universe every week. Again, if only for the free summon tickets. However, this is an area that I completely overlooked. Did you know you also earn 250,000 credits per week through this? The extra pulls and the jades are nice, but the credits are absolutely crucial as you get further in the game. I've probably missed out on millions of credits over the last year simply because I didn't bother to complete some auto battle simulated universe runs. Don't be like me. Get the credits, you're going to need them. Another quick, smaller tip. Do your daily quest too. The reward is only 5,000 credits and I ignored it plenty of times but they take next to no time to do. That's only 155,000 credits a month. It doesn't seem like much, it's not much. But again, if people are willing to grind 90 minutes for 70,000 credits, this is far more efficient than that. 
The rough math puts that grind I mentioned at 777 credits per minute, or thereabouts. So 5,000 credits for a few minutes worth of effort seems really good in comparison. Again, my goal here is to help set you up for success without destroying your soul and burning you out doing these soul crushing grinds that people always recommend. When you Google how to farm credits, people are talking about this stuff that no reasonable person really wants to do. So my hope is I can boil these back a little bit, help make them more approachable for the average player who is super serious about trying to get to endgame, but isn't willing to go to absolutely ridiculous levels to do so. Now I have a few more tips that I was thankful to have been doing from the beginning. I know a lot of people like to mainline the story and ignore all of the side quests. But those are absolute treasure troves of resources, including those always important credits. 60,000 credits here, 110,000 credits there. This stuff adds up fast. And that's not even taking into account the extra stellar jades. As someone who completed every single quest on Urello 6 before moving on, I recommend doing them for the story alone. They're fun. Enjoy the world, explore, and you'll get some credits without, you know, the mind-numbing grind. At least this way you get some story instead of just fighting random mobs every single day forever. This is a small one, but don't burn all of the energy the second you have it. Just like with money, energy can burn through your pocket. Save up some of it for emergencies. You never know when you'll need some simulated universe redemptions or need just a few more runs of a Calyx so you can get someone to level up when you need it. Don't let it cap and overflow either, obviously, but try to keep it as high as possible while still allowing yourself to take a few days off here or there without worrying about losing your energy. Even if I do feel bad about missing on some credits or missing on some jades because I didn't play that day, at the very least, I know my energy is not going to waste. Oh god, I remember reading this early on. Focus on one team. Everyone says focus on one team. The thing is, they recommend this so you can get through harder content sooner. Of course, being a new player, I wasn't super worried about timeliness, so I just ignored that. Now, knowing what I know, the reason I recommend it, however, is that it's just too damn expensive to do so. You can draw the line earlier than I did, sure, but I consider a character to be done when the primary stat of the relic I want is done, incorrect, and all of the traces are complete with a 5888 ability split, with the light cone maxed out too. You certainly don't have to bother unlocking all of the smaller traces, but I'd personally rather get a character completely done and then move on. Again, all this was in front of my face the entire time. Take a good hard look at Hoyo's leveling calculator. A brand new five-star character takes 888,000 credits to go from rank one to rank 80, just in leveling. And then getting those traces unlocked is another 1,460,000 credits. That's 2.3 million credits for one character alone. You really can't afford multiple teams at once if you're in level capped content. And that's before you even think about the 290 purple XP books and all of the other various resources that you'll need to grind using the energy that you have. All of this is a huge balancing act. With that math, one full team of five star characters would take nearly 10 million credits. So don't waste it leveling up a random 5 star to level 80 like I did, just because I could. I didn't even have a team built for him. I just wanted, I, I could level him, so I did. I had the materials, I had the money, why not level him? It'll feel good, but it's not useful. Meanwhile, the characters I'm actually using weren't maxed out yet. So that's the end of my first full Star Rail video. I hope it was useful. I generally don't feel qualified enough to be making build guides like most people do on here but finding time efficient farming methods are definitely my thing. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment for this video's question. 
Is there anything else from Honkai Star Rail that you'd like me to cover? Boss guides, team comps, do you think I actually could tackle those more casual build guides? Try to boil them down to something that is actually useful, not super optimized, and isn't going to take you 16 years to, to build. Let me know. If you want to support the channel, as always, there's that Patreon in the description below. You know, super appreciate all the support, even just watching my videos, all I can ask for. For now though, I think that's it. I'll see you next time.